Uh, so welcome to today's lecture. So today we will talk about uh, data visualization and how we can use some BI analytic tools. So that is business intelligence tools to explore data and also to analyze data. So um, data visualization is another important way to understanding our data. Uh, we just talked about using SQL to query data in the relational database. So that is one way. Another way is through those BI tools. So by using those data visualization tools. Many of those slides is from the Tableau desktop training. So Tableau is one of those leading um, BI tools. Um, but QuickSight is another one. So uh, they share some sim similarities in terms of functions. Uh, so many of those slides are from Tableau, but we will use a uh, quick site uh, for today's lab. <clears throat> okay, uh, so why data visualization is important? So let's say that we have our data. So that is uh, organized in the tables in the relational database. So let's say we have uh, four groups of data. Group one, two, three, four. Okay, so within each group, we have the uh, a pair of those two variables, so x and y. Okay, x and y. So now you have the data and they are <laughs> nicely organized in those tables. So can you get some insight of the data? So what are the relationships between those axes, between the x and y variables? Okay, and you may say, okay, it's, it's very hard to tell, right? So now let's run some queries. So let's Let's calculate some statistics. So that is what we have learned from those statistics. And we can calculate those mean values, the variance, etc., by using SQL or by using any other stati statistic tools. So what we get? <clears throat> we see that all those among those four groups, so they have the, exactly the same means for x. Variants are the same um, mean, the same mean for y, and the variants are the same. And they have the same correlation. And also, if you say you, if you create a linear regr regression model, they have a, the exactly parameters. Okay, so statistically, x and y have the same relationship. Okay. So is that true? Is that the really the case? So what if we put that one into charts? So if we visualize the data. So now we can say definitely they are the, the relationships are different. Okay. So in this group we can say they have very close uh, positive relationship between x and y in a third group, and in the fourth group we can say x y. X and Y do not have any relationship, okay? So Y is not responding to the change of X, okay? And also, they also have different relationships among X uh, in, the, in the first and also the second groups. So there are some patterns that we have to identify those patterns with visualizations. So we cannot see those patterns by just using statistics. Okay, so why visualization is important? So data visualization is no, it's no longer a personal preference. It is a necessity, okay? So it is the first step that when we need to, when we, when we want to understand our data. So the first step should always explore the data visually. Okay, because there are some insights that can only be found through the data visualizations. Okay, and also another important <coughs> reason is that uh, people tend to react the visualizations faster, and also people tend to remember the effect of those visualizations longer. Okay, so that's what we call the picture superiority effect. So pictures are retained at much higher rates 
than the words or than the numbers. Uh, let's see another example. So here, uh, let's see that. Can you find out or remember that the regions, the top five highest revenue products regions that from this table? Okay, so I can just give you a few seconds. Okay, so what if we add colors? So now we add in by adding colors, so it's very easy to identify those uh, top five product regions. Okay, and what if we just simply remove all the numbers and also just give you colors? Okay, so this time I think it's it's pretty much easy to identify and also remember those top five products and regions. Another example of using color or visualization is that here, let's see, can you count how many nines are there? Okay, and I just give you a, a few seconds to do that. Okay, so now what if we give you the colors? Okay, so now this time you can see that it is amazing that how much easier it is easy to find out and see those nines as soon as they are picked up out in different colors, and picked up uh, in gold. Okay, um, so when we use colors, and also just keep in mind that almost 8% of the men and also um, are the color blind, are color blind. So we should try to avoid using the red and also green color combination. And instead, we should use blue-orange as an, as a good alternative, okay? Because um, almost 8% 8, 8 of the men cannot distinguish red and also green. And for continuous colors, we should use color ramps, which are very effective. And we will see some examples later. And for discrete, colors data. Uh, you can use different type of colors. However, try to limit the colors and eight. Okay, use no more than eight colors. And in most textbooks of color visualizations, it is highly recommend to use and five so that is ideal. Okay, so do not use more than five different type of colors. Um, Otherwise, you will get confused and it's not an effective um, data visualization. Okay, so this is one example. So this one is very, very, has too, so many colors and it is not helpful to, to remember to distinguish those different countries. Okay, uh, so try to reduce the number of the colors. And also when we're using colors, also think about the background, okay? So color is relative, it is not absolute. Okay, so color will change if your background changes. Okay, so make sure that you always use a consistent background. Okay, when we use color, uh, when, when we are using colors in the visualizations. Um, and also another, uh, example here is that how for quantitative data, so how, how can we use color intensities? So here you can see we're using uh, uh, different uh, color schemas. This is a diverging color schema. So that means that we are using different type of colors. And in the middle, we just change the darkness or the purity of the color. Okay, so to represent different range of the values. And this is also another good example that we are using orange and also and blue as an alternative to red and green. Okay, so try to avoid using red and green. Okay, because many people cannot distinguish red and green. Okay, so use blue and orange as a good alter alternative. 